really love you so much. I love much. you so much. Like, there's like, no one I put There's no you. one on this world. If you are a creator and you are doing this a lot. Move to the house, motherfucker, now look at us. Please. Please. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta ride. Loki, like, bro, we This sucks. <laughs> We're here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Janet. And listen me out. We just did an interview with Pamela from Coliseum. Muck together. Mukbang, exactly. Dude, I got so much love for Atlanta. Big room on my plate. I just said my price and did not hurt. But overall, I would rate it like probably like. Bitch, what I was trying to say is this situation got me so wet and so dry at the same time. What's up, bitches? It's Fiji. I just want to let you guys know that this is a little mini episode where we talk about our experience at Revolt World. We do have a full vlog with the whole weekend where Autumn came to Atlanta. We went to Revolt World. We went out. We went to Juicy Crab. We did a recap. All of the things that is on YouTube at So What So Dry. The O's are zeros. And yeah, let's get into it. What's up, bitches? So it is Sunday now. We have seen and done Revolt World. So we just wanted to put a little section in talking about our thoughts and our experience at Revolt World. So we finished out the day yesterday at Revolt World. We had such a hard time getting an Uber. Finally got home. We decided we didn't want to go out. We did a couple skits, just kind of like drank and chilled at home. This morning, we were really thinking about going back to the second day, but we were kind of feeling like we needed time to have like a business strategy planning session based on but yeah, like recent events. Yeah, like what we learned from Revolt World. So yeah. we're just going to talk like a little bit about our takeaways from the event yesterday. And I do want to also say, guys, like we do not <laughs> fuck with Diddy or any of that shit. Like this um, event in Revolt World has like separated themselves like from Diddy. And this was a completely free event for creators. So it was like important for us to go to because we don't have many events like that. So first of all, it was hot as fuck when we were there. And like, we're the type of bitches that we do like perspirate. Like I was like really hot and like, when it gets like that, I don't feel cute anymore. You know, everyone has their camera in front of your face. Like, I was like... We had big boots on. Like, yeah, that was stupid on my part. Anyways, yeah, that was like our feet hurt. Like, it's a lot of walking for sure. And we weren't like VIP. Like, so we didn't yeah. get the little golf cart experience, which I was hella jealous, honestly. Mozzie has joined us <laughs> on the couch. Fiji's dog. So just ignore. Um, he's really cute. Don't ignore him. But, like, you know what I mean? So... Basically, I, I do think it felt really empowering to be there. Like, there again, there's not that many times that I'm in a room with a bunch of creators. Mm -hmm. Like, we obviously are small creators. And so, like, an event like this is really, really beneficial to that community and people that want to start doing any type of entrepreneurship, honestly. Like, it's yep. not just for podcasters, YouTubers. It's for every type of artist you can think of. Business, businesses, like, any entrepreneurship – um, and it was dedicated a lot to black creators, young black creators. Like there's a lot of college, like college students yeah. there. HBCUs was a big thing. Huge. Right. Yeah. When they said that shit at the concert, like bitches went wild in yeah. the crowd. So that's also super fucking important because there's even less of spaces dedicated to that yeah. specifically. Um, so, you know, supporting that and being there like was great. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely the energy overall. It's like. I yeah. feel like rarely, like, do you go out and you're surrounded by people who are all, like, going after something or are motivated and creative and, like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get what they want and, like, strategize and network and talk. It's motivating. And yeah. people would just come up to you and be like, hey, like, check me out. Like, I make music or, like, I do lashes. Like, literally it was from A to Z, like, everything you could think of. Yeah. And... It was just like normalized. Like that was just the culture. Whereas if you're just on the street, like, hey, blah, 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 people get like. Yeah, you know? but because of that, also, like, it is a little bit awkward because it feels like yeah. every time you're interacting with someone, it's a chance for you to promote yourself and them to promote themselves as well. But the human connection is like, was less yeah. there because we're all here for that. And that's okay, you know, but it's not maybe a place to like make a true friend. Like, it is a place to like. 
advocate for yourself and like promote your shit. Yeah, and I feel like our approach with that, because we haven't done a lot of like promoting together, like in person and like yeah. talking about the podcast and all of those things. And also we feel a little bit uncomfortable just walking up to someone like, oh, like this is our podcast. Like we had business cards and we would give them out yeah. when we were talking to someone, but like it was just a little, it just feels a little bit like shovey because everyone is like, you know? Yeah, it did. It did feel a little bit like that. But at the same time, it's like, you know, at least there's like, this is a space for that. Yeah. So it's okay. Um, but the first thing we did was we went to a masterclass that was called like content to cash flow. They had a business that was about black luxury menswear, but they also did other things. Like it seemed like they managed people. Yeah, they, like, they had like, like a content kingdom and that was like the biggest thing they pushed. They were like, the three main things you need to do to get started was to know your niche, know your worth and build a content kingdom. And it was only 20 minutes, like, of them kind of talking, and they shared videos from people that they've worked with that, like, grew their shit and, like, have millions of followers online, TikTok, whatever, what have you, and then the audience asked some questions, and then that was it. So it was really short. Yeah, I feel like it was definitely, like, the know your niche thing. It's, like, it, it seems like a lot of information if you are a creator and you are doing this a lot. Like, you yeah. you come across these YouTube videos, these podcasts, like, it was kind of, like, entry level like I will say the most um important or like best takeaway for me was one of the guys that when he was talking about know your worth and he dropped some actual numbers in terms of like okay like this creator was making 1k and then they helped them like advocate for 10k right. like hearing those numbers as a creator like helps you visualize like what is possible because sometimes we have no idea yeah when we're talking to brands so that yeah. was helpful and it was a good thing too because they had a client and they they the client wanted ten thousand or like that's what they wanted for their client and then the business was like we'll give you six thousand and they said no like mm -hmm. that's not gonna happen and then the client was like well what the hell like I want that six thousand like yeah you guys like and they're like no because then they're gonna say oh well even though they said they want ten thousand they did it for six so they're never gonna give you ten thousand right. So it's like, yes, you lost that one deal, but it's like next time when they do have the 10 bands, like they'll go to you and be like, now we're ready. Like Tell they were serious. Work. So that was good too. But I mean, it's hard. Like it's not a one size two fits all. Like what I said in like earlier in the vlog, like it's like we're, we're small creators for sure, but we're not just starting out. Like we have established like a structure and like what we yeah. want to do and like all of that. And it took us a minute like we evolved but we don't we're not starting from scratch so like it wasn't that helpful for us and like I do feel like no shade to them and like not even about that but I just feel like the common thing online of like how to become viral how to build that content kingdom it's like at the end of the day it's not gonna happen for everyone like mm -hmm. I'm so sorry it's not so it's like to preach that to everyone it's like it wouldn't be what it is if it was so accessible and yeah like, just build it just build the kingdom like it's fucking work like yeah and it's not gonna happen for everyone even if they do work hard like that's just you know that's yeah that's tea. and it's also because it's like we fundamentally like they were talking more about I think TikTok creators like we're a podcast and we're also not how to's like we're not life coaches like yeah. we're not going to sell an ebook telling you guys how to have healthier relationships how to have a better sex life like yeah. we're not, not claiming we to be experts right in we're everything. doing thought like, leadership media criticism like education those things so like a lot of the ways that they were suggesting you monetize outside of brand deals is stuff that like like productizing what you do like, and I don't yeah. think that's really like us like what would we make like a fuck like no yeah so it's like it's like you know we are gonna have another video coming out after this where we talk a little bit more about our journey as creators because it is helpful every time we hear from other people yeah and we do want to offer that but that's like you know a one-time thing because we're together it's not like what we're like really trying to do yes so the other cool thing is that like people were obviously taking a lot of content like during this whole thing so we did a couple of interviews one of them we had to pay for it was $30 to do an interview but it will be on Coliseum and it, they have a pretty wide reach so we were kind of like fuck it let's just do it we didn't really know much about it like nothing like that it was kind of like off the cuff yeah um and it was interesting like I will say like 
it was really, really good practice for us. I because, think, yeah, we might have failed. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's just like really hard. Like, like, it was fine. Like, we're not professionals, right? Like, we don't know how to give a live fucking show. Like, we've never like we. There don't, was no prep. There was there no was nothing. Questions. Like, it's just introduce yourself. I'm like, okay, my life story, my job, just <laughs> my name. <laughs> like, what do you want from me? Like, I don't know. So I feel like we were a little bit. I mean, I think we handled it well. When I say we failed, it's because when we said what we do which were sex relationships personal identity podcast but we're also teeter yeah where the internet and reality collide but that's a mouthful (laughs) right and people hear sex and they run with that and so then they you know it how are you an expert in sex came up and like then we felt compelled and to say that like well we've worked in the industry of sex before and then They were kind of, you know, pleased with that. And then the whole rest of the interview was about favorite positions. um, Just, like, what it was like as a stripper when, like, that's not even what our podcast is. Like, we've talked about it, like, three times. Tips and, like... Like, it's, like, again, like, no hate. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. It wasn't... Because it was also, like, I think where we fucked up is at the very because we just met this woman right like it's just she's asking you like whatever and she wasn't our age either so it wasn't yeah. like aligned in and it's way. like it's not like the niche of like people who watch video essays or people who like you know like she's yeah. not gonna know yeah and like when she asked us to introduce ourselves we literally just said we're Fiji we're auto of so wet so dry and that's it like we should have said like we work in marketing and this is what our podcast yeah. is about we work in entertainment like we should have taken the direction more and I think like because sex was the easy thing to grab that's like yeah. what she ran with and yeah. like it is like spicy you know but like we we learned throughout this whole process like <laughs> explaining what we do especially the second we say podcast too when we're networking with a lot of people they'd be like oh I want to be on the podcast and it's like, we're not opposed to having people on and having interviews and all of that. But if they're an expert in the topic that we're talking about, and like, it's kind of awkward to explain that because some like music artists will be like, oh, I want to come on. And like, they just associate like podcast sex. Like, okay, we're just having like a, like a chat, a, chi- a kiki about like, whatever. right. Which is cool. But Which like, is fine. But if you guys we listen, like well, that's not what we've been doing. Like we're super research heavy right now and like, we're loving it. So yeah. it's like. Would I want to get to a point where we could do that? Like, sure. But it's just, like, I don't... Like, when people say, can I be on it and you haven't even seen it yet, it's a little bit crazy. Yeah, it's like, a little much. You don't even know us. Like, what if we were, like, evil? Like, yeah. I don't know. So, that's just... But it's just, yeah. We learned a lot about, like, being perceived. And, again, it's on us. Like, we're obviously not explaining it correctly. Yes. Yeah. And, like, yes, we talk about sex. But, like, more so we talk about sex education. We're not, like how to fuck like that's not what we do and And it's it's more about like tiktok trends and like what's going on in the culture and society and like body insecurities during sex not like favorite position and like again that's fine and like we probably said our favorite positions because that's fun but like started more like that like we did yeah because we didn't know what we were doing and like we didn't realize like how much work goes into it and we didn't realize that we needed to be intellectually stimulated as well yeah. for it to be like us to be into it too yeah. and that's the other thing I will say and this is I like we got it at Revolt World and other times when we tried to explain the podcast too like the like what are you an expert in or what makes you like the right person to talk about that this stuff and I think it's because you know today everybody's an influencer everybody has a podcast everybody is doing this stuff so people are skeptical right. of the oversaturation of like so much content and it's like but again they're associating podcast with a certain thing and youtube channel and I don't know like we have our niche but like right. the style of content unless you're the type of person that's really watching media criticism video essays yeah. this type of podcast like it's so div- right. it, but it also did feel very condescending a lot of times and I think it's because we're women like I literally had someone recently that I was telling about the podcast be like oh like you're pretty like do you really have like things to say like you know just just sexism outright and especially right. from men like it, that was the women were great right but the men it would it's been a little yeah but they're not really our target audience anyway so like fuck it yeah but it's just like 
again, it's like sexism and all that shit. And it's also like we've learned like we need to explain yes. it better. And like we're not claiming to be experts in anything. Like do we have experience in things? Yeah. Do we go to college? Yeah. Do we have jobs? Yeah. But like we're not like claiming to be anything. And it's yeah. like who says you need to to have a channel? And like I get the criticism. It's like okay, well like – people everyone on YouTube wants to be a journalist they want to be like a detective and like all these things that it's like like we're not trying to do that like we're literally just to, like trying to be raw and like relate to people yeah and we, we just want people to like ask questions and like you guys can be do this critical. stuff too like yeah. we just want you to be like scrolling on TikTok and think about this from a different perspective that's like, it it's the fact that regular people can do it you know it's like we're not doing something that's right. like crazy right anyone can fucking do this yeah like, probably, you just have to love to talk and want to work really <laughs> and hard like think about things critically yeah exactly after that we went to like a concert essentially like the thing about this that was cool is it really did mix business with like nightlife party because yeah. the concert was lit I mean yeah. it really was and we saw Rob 49 42 Doug which honestly I knew who both of them were but like I really fucked yeah. with them like I thought it they was were like good up. and they brought girls on stage that were like talking yeah. and stuff and they were absolutely killing it like, like just it people felt. in the audience yeah and Cash Cobain and then Offset and I forget if I said but we did see Lay Banks and I'm like yeah, and her. Mariah the Scientist was there, but we missed and her. And we missed it. And I don't think he got performed. I don't think so either. Like, or he was supposed it. to, or, or we Or we it. were eating, because we were eating. Maybe we had missed that. I don't know, though, because we saw Rock Fortnite, he was first. Regardless, I don't know about that, but that was really fun, and that was just more, like, chill. We were yeah, and a lot of people, because it was a free show, like, free event, came just for the concert like during yeah. the afternoon morning there were not that many people there at all the concert was yeah it was much more just like networking and learning and then at night is like when most people came um and i will say like if you guys plan to go next year or if you're thinking about it or something like that like it is free but parking i think it was like ten dollars and there's vip levels it is a lot of walking so like comfortable shoes that sort of stuff it was hot as fuck bring a fan we didn't drink lots of water like we were hungry you can get one water and it's like five dollars or something crazy but you can refill it and they have like like clean fucking nice water that yeah you can do yeah and, and porta potty so kind of gross the food and the drinks were really expensive like and like and hours. like not like and the not drinks good. were not hitting oh like, they were premium and the food was giving like microwavable but like we, you know, but we also didn't eat the Jamaican food sec like yeah, we ate it was like the twenty five dollars. So yeah. like maybe that's why. Yeah, and it's like it was a free event. It was the, also the weirdest part that I didn't like was the revolt bucks or whatever. Oh, where it was like you had to exchange your money for like revolt bucks and pay for those but it's giving like, Disney World and then we like ended up having an extra five or ten yeah we had we ten, spend. now it's like we have ten dollars like but it's worth nothing nothing so we spent an extra ten dollars for like no like reason. we lost ten dollars that's how they get that's you. how you they get you like literally but it's like it's an, a free event and it is like a lot of free learning free access there were networking um, not networking, like execs, you could do like 10 minute sessions. Oh yeah, and office that. hours, because it was office only hours. 10 minutes. But yeah, like they got rappers to pull up, like they can have a little extra money. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, and, like and normally that would be so expensive to see all of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then the last thing that we forgot to mention before is like there was a little like opportunity center with some like brands and stuff. We did talk to one of them um, about like potential collaboration. So we'll follow up with them and like we'll see so like that part was cool yeah. i kind of wish we had talked to more entrepreneurs that had like products and stuff I know. because that would have been the best to collab with versus like music artists who want to be on the show like that's not really our niche so like i think we made the most of it but it's a lot like it's an overwhelming day we were trying to vlog like it's it, is it a was lot. a lot so and it was hot prepared. like yeah. i know that sounds so dramatic but like when it's like 97 or something crazy humidity like it's hard to like you know like yeah. we were getting so and all the social battery was draining as well yeah so. but overall i would rate it like probably like an eight out of ten experience would i go again absolutely um i yeah. think it's like 10 out of 10 for like what they're doing because i think there needs yeah. to be a space for it but just like my personal experience like eight out of ten yeah i would say the same i think for us 
I want to give us an 8 out of 10 too because I think like business cards, like wearing the shirts was really good. Like that yeah, that's what I meant. Us. Like for Oh, for us. I thought you meant the event. Okay. Like both. Okay, yeah. yeah. But I think we did like, especially in our planning and strategy meeting, like we learned a lot. We did. And it, it inspired us or like clicked in our brains. Like, okay. Because like getting, we talk about all the time we want to do a focus group, but it's like, we literally were like seeing people's reaction to like what we say our podcast is and like, it's not, it's working. not clicking. So now we're like, okay, we need to regroup. But also we don't think they were our audience. Like, right. <laughs> so that's tea actually, but it's yeah. fine guys. We're figuring it out. We're wet, dry, and fucking confused. Yeah. I don't know. There's no such thing as a sugar daddy without the sugar. This is very true, but what I will say, there are two types of women who are sometimes able to get away with having a sugar daddy without giving any sugar. And this is just something that I've noticed over the years. They are either one, drop dead gorgeous, like on a scale of one to 10 and society standards, they would be an 11. Or number two, which I think is more important, is they are master manipulators. Their understanding of human psychology goes way past like the average person's knowledge. Um, some of them are like borderline sociopaths in my opinion, um, but yeah. And I'll actually throw in a third situation is sometimes people have sugar daddies that they used to give sugar to, but over the years they've developed a friendship and maybe the physical part of their relationship has ended, but that person still financially takes care of them. So yeah, if you don't have one of those two traits or both or the third situation going on, you're going to have a very hard time getting away with something like that.